All right, we are officially recording. Very cool. It'd be good to see all my VIPs straight after this call. So you will have to uh, log out uh, or close out of this out of this uh, this group, and then you'll re-sign in with your VIP link, and it's going to be really fun. And I'm going to be sharing another couple of couple of really great keys and listening to your music and, and showing you the places where I think that your music would be best signed and, and for your best chances of placements. So it's going to be really cool. Uh, if you do want to join the, if you think, Oh, if you're on the fence and you're still up wondering about the VIP, you can still get a replay or you can still, uh, you can sign up anytime during this call and you can dive into that as well. And um, so you can still get a part of that, but that's awesome. Okay. So, uh, so, okay, so let me, I want to find out who's here as I'm trying to help you guys a little bit. So who, <laughs> I've got a couple of questions for you. So uh, who knows how many days till Christmas? <laughs> this one, don't work it out. I'm going to wait. Who, who's the fastest one here? Does anybody know? Have we got any Christmas super, super, super fans? No, we, we got some people that are, All right, who's going to work it out? I, I'm going to have a guess. 80, is it 85? 80, 75? I don't know. I, I haven't even counted it myself. We always have someone in that in the neighborhood, right, that's uh, already got their Christmas Christmas decorations up maybe or or, or Halloween and they're up early. They're the earliest people. So is it 81? 81 days to Christmas? Yeah, just check. Cool. All right. So, um, all right. So let's go, let's go ahead and dive in. Um, I've got about five keys that I really want to share with you guys. Five things that have really, really, really helped me uh, get placements and get these, get these Christmas placements. Um, they're, they're really key. And I was actually reminded of uh, one of my collaborators just last night um, reminded me that once you learn some of these keys, you can really, really trust them because last year we wrote a Christmas song together, a collaboration, and um, and we sent it to one publisher and the publisher suggested a couple of lyric changes, but we were, I think we were just really busy at the time and, and we just held strong and we just like, we didn't say like, oh no, we can't do those changes. We just said, well, let's, you know, maybe we'll pitch it somewhere else or uh, we, we, we did that. We didn't change it and we pitched it somewhere else. And it landed a placement and within like a month or maybe two months tops. And it's like, once you know some of these keys, they are really, really powerful. And you can hold fast to them and knowing that you just got to get to the right place that will pitch it. And so, so it's so, so cool learning, learning these keys. But before we dive into the keys, um, cause I, hopefully you guys are going to have a, a pad and paper ready to go, a pad and pencil or a pen, pen and paper. Um, or you can type because I'm going to run through these keys really, really quick. And just, you know, we, I don't have, we don't have enough time here to dive in to, uh, to, to everything, you know, there's hours and hours and hours of, of stuff that I want to help you with. So I want to let you know, first of all, now that, you know, I'm going to give you five great takeaways and then we're going to answer some questions. But if you want to join me for the next six weeks, we're going to super do a super, super deep, deep dive into writing Christmas songs for a sync. We're going to be talking about public domain songs. We're going to be talking about instrumentals and we're going to be talking about um, original Christmas songs. I'm going to give you a lot of stats of what's out there and who's getting, who needs what and all that kind of stuff. But we're going to really dive in over the next six weeks up to Thanksgiving. So it's going to be a, a big Christmas, early Christmas party, but it's just in time um, to, for December when all the Christmas placements with one of the main shows that I work with they just have tons and tons of opportunities. So it's, I'll cr help, help you craft your song. You'll learn what to do and what not to do, but I'll help craft your song and uh, giving you feedback sessions and that kind of thing. And it, it's just going to be a great, awesome six weeks. So I already have a bunch of people that already signed up already, but um, so I just want to let you guys know that that's a very, that's an option for you as we, as we, uh, as we finish up this, but I hope you guys are ready. If you're ready in the chat, give me a plus two. <laughs> that you're ready. You got your pen and paper because we're going to dive right into this. And as I said, I really want to um, answer some questions. So we're going to leave room for questions at the end of this as well. And um, all right, I see some people ready. Very cool. Very cool. Awesome. <laughs> Did I see a plus 100? Or what? Oh, a plus two. Yeah, very cool. 
All right, here we go. Here we go. So, um, okay, number one. So number one is no big storylines for your Christmas songs. If you want to get them placed, you can't have competing storylines. Now, this is this is so important because I've heard um, the company that I'm working with, Imaginary Friends Music Partners, we do a lot and a lot of Christmas Christmas songs and Christmas music. And uh, we've rejected so many songs that come in that have just so so much storyline, like like maybe the movies about the movie that they're they want the piece of music they want their placement and and the movie's talking about a couple that are falling in love at christmas but the song that we're listening to is about you know a, a, a child opening up presents on christmas morning or something and it's like but there's too much detail and there's too much story that it really uh it really 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 gets in the way and so it's very very important to try and constantly always ask yourself how does it feel like you know if you if you did write a lyric that was like, you know, uh, as a Christmas child opening up a present or something, if you wrote that lyric, it's going to be too much too descriptive. So I would ask you and I would say to you, and this is what I do, I would ask myself, well, how does that feel? Uh, I would say something like the excitement of Christmas morning or uh, the excitement uh, looking under the tree or uh, those are v- way more universal and those uh those are just going to be easier to place a lot more because you you can't have these big long stories in um, for for sync like that's for anything in sync that's such a big um, um, you just can't have those big stories but even more for for Christmas placements this is that's a big one and we've as I said um, you know we've had to decline uh, quite a few songs because they could be awesome and and I love a good story but for sync they just get in the way and it just really kind of um, makes them unsinkable or uh, unplaceable. So that's number one. Number two is um, it has to sound like Christmas right from the beginning. You've got to have your sleigh Come bell. On. Gotta, My oh. meeting starts now. Oh, it was now. <laughs> oh. there we go. <laughs> yeah. The meeting has started. That's right. So, um, so number two, so you've got to have your, um, your, the Christmas sounds right from the beginning, like having those sleigh bells, um, church bells. Those are some great Christmas sounds um, and and get creative too. Like I, I do hear a lot of uh, sleigh bells, but it seems like they're looped and, and you can really hear it's just the one very kind of uh, looped kind of sound all the way through. If you don't yet pick up yourself, a, um, these are like 10 bucks or something. I don't know if you can hear them on the, can you guys hear that? Yeah, it's coming through loud. So pick yourself up some sleigh bells and and then when you okay, yeah, we've got some sleigh bells. And then actually record it yourself where you're like, that's gonna sound that's gonna sound a hundred times better than just getting the simple looped ones and just and you can hear it, you know, as a producer, as an engineer, I can hear that it's 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 just sounds like a sample that's it's just going throughout and they don't really change as much. And um uh, so it's really it's really nice to have a real kind of sound and i would loop that for a good six to eight measures so it doesn't sound like every measure it's just doing a loop it's actually you know having sometimes i'll do actually odd numbers because then it's even even harder to uh figure out that is that a loop i don't know but it, it's it's it loops again at a uh at a odd number which is you know most music even numbers are the key you know so um so that's uh, so. Make sure you use those sounds now. Having a look at church bells, uh, those kind of sounds, xylophones, uh, glockenspiels, um, even toy pianos, toy uh, toy glockenspiels. Those kind of things are really really cool. But make sure at the very beginning, make sure when you push play to that song, it's got to feel like Christmas. It's got to have a sleigh bell. It's got to have something happening. But get creative with it. it. Doesn't need to be sleigh bells like. You could actually have like a, sometimes what I do is a sleigh bell, I go dun, 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 ding, and have another little bell or another little thing. So it's like coming in and it's, you get really creative with it. So um, that's a great way. So number two is you've got to have, uh, it's got to sound like Christmas right from the play. A lot of the times when they're using these for placements, it, they're doing everything to make this feel like a Christmas movie. And some of these 
some of these uh, movies are filmed in in summer or filmed in uh, spring or fall, but they need to make it set feel like it's Christmas. So they're doing everything they possibly can. They're putting trees out. They're doing decking out all the colors. They'll put fake snow on the ground. Uh, they'll put the actors in these big coats that are like probably sweating underneath. And um, and then they need the music that sounds like Christmas. Everything just has to just sound so much like Christmas. And and sometimes they feel like they they need to go overboard and they do to get that. So that's how you get those placements. Got to have that Christmas song, Christmas sound. Number three, uh, you guys keeping up? <laughs> Am I going too fast? Awesome. Okay. I just want to give you guys so much info, info because um, this, this is how you do it. This is how you get those placements. Okay. So number three, okay. This is the cool one. This is a really, really cool one. And if you don't know this one, you're just going to be light years ahead of a lot of artists and a lot of people in sync. It's um, name your public domain songs correctly for 100% of the royalties. Now, if you, if, if you didn't, and I, and I might've sent this out on an email that this is such a big, big one. If you uh, do public domain of Jingle Bells, do not call it Jingle Bells, call it Jingly Jangly Bells or call it Steve's Jingly Jangly Bells or call it Steve's Bells That Jingle give it an original title because you're you're then going to get 100% of the royalties from your PRO. If you name it just Jingle Bells, you actually only get 10% of your royalties. That's a big, big, big deal changer. So just that you came to this thing today, you're going away with an amazing tip or amazing key. Um, uh, well, no, uh, Jingle Bells is a is a Christmas song. It's a public domain Christmas song, but uh, or Christmas Carol, whatever you want to call. It. But if you you got to you got to rename it for yourself. You got to call it Steve's or or Dave's or John's, Bob's, whatever whatever you want to call it. Whatever your name is, change the title so that you can collect one hundred percent of the royalties. Otherwise, if you register it as Jingle Bells, you only get ten percent of those royalties. That's a big, 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 big one. So, uh, and then when you find, when you're looking for uh, the titles or trying to create a fun title, one example is, um, uh, I heard this week actually was really cool. Uh, somebody sent in um, Away in a Beautiful Major, uh, a main, manger, like instead of Away in a Major, it's Away in a Beautiful Major. And I'm like, that's cool. That's great. That's a great little simple way of letting the music supervisor know this is a this is a um this is one of the the public demands you you know away in a major but away in a beautiful major we could come up with so many different different titles like that so that's a really cool one all right so um uh hey michelle uh what libraries for the original name maybe put um they do they do put a um they might they might do that whatever they sometimes you might send it into the publisher and they put their own title out or they might do a, a number like crucial music which is another another library they they often put uh cr you know and then it's crucial crm i think it is and or cmi and um and put a number there but i would do it right from the beginning for yourself i would do it right from the beginning and keep it all together because there's nothing worse than looking back at your files and be like well, where did Jingle Punks go? And then the title was uh, Steve's Jingle Punks or Jingle um, Jingle Bells. So, um, uh, good question, Peter. That goes to um, uh, that should actually go to. I, I actually I don't know. Peter asked a great question here. He's like, if it's a public domain, who gets the other ninety percent of the royalties? That is an excellent excellent question, Peter. And I encourage you. Actually, I'd I'd uh, I'd reach out to the PROs, your PRO, and see if you see if you can get the exact answer from the horse's mouth, because that's an excellent, excellent uh, question. And and I don't even want to guess because I might be wrong, but that's a really good question. That, so, that, okay, was so, that was me. I'm Scott. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. oh, okay. I see. I see it there for. Uh, oh, I see. I see it there for Peter as from Peter as well. Yes, yeah, so Peter and Scott. Great, excellent question. Excellent question. So go. I'd go ahead and. Um, um, I would actually, I would definitely do that. I might even do that myself because that's a that's a good question because that's a, I'd like to know that as well. So reach out to your PRO and find out who's going to get the other percentage, you know. Um, all right, cool. Let's move on to number four. Uh, find out who is making Christmas movies and pitch directly to them. Now that's a, um, 
it's pretty broad. It's pretty like, oh, well, duh. That, that's a, that's, of course you do that. But the big question that brings up is where do you, how do you find these shows that are working? How do you, um, how do you know when they're looking for music? And, and they're looking for Christmas songs and Christmas music all year round. It is so, so cool. Um, uh, in the course, in the, in the six week course, I interview uh, Christmas Corey. He's got, he's got over a hundred uh, Christmas placements, even more. I, I think, I feel like it was 182 or something you just said. But um, he talks about one of his strategies using a company that um, that finds out exactly who who they're uh, you know ha- who's doing the movies and when are they needing the music and and he shares his his uh, his plan or his strategy on that which is really really cool. But one idea is uh, to just get out there, get on the social media, Google it. Google's great, you know. Uh, you could probably even find some AI stuff that will help you even look up who's doing Christmas music or something. I, AI is a whole new whole new uh, can of worms, but there are some good things that it helps you do research or that kind of thing. So that might be a great thing, but find out who's doing them, um, who needs the music. And, and and that's that's what you want to do. You want to pitch early and you can be pitching all year round. Uh, now, nowadays, there's Hallmark is actually doing um, Christmas in July, which is so, so cool. The main purpose of this is. Oh, let's we'll go mute here. Uh, they even do Christmas in July, which is which is super super powerful. Um, more more opportunities for our Christmas songs. So, all right. So moving on, number five is um, you've got to say a Christmas word in the first few lines. Now, when I say you could say the word Christmas, just get it straight out there, or you could say uh, it, you know uh, it maybe in the second line you're you say something like, I can hear the jingle bells. I can hear the sleigh bells. You could say uh, in the first line, um, elves or I don't know, but you say these little Christmas things that are really only current to Christmas. And that helps with, you've got your jingle bells or you've got your sleigh bells happening at the beginning of the song. It sounds like Christmas. Then the first words you say, the first first uh, two lines, maybe in the first three or four lines, I would, I would probably get in the first two lines. You will see in if anybody who signs up for the for the course, you will see that I go through over twenty different placements, and you will see textbook <laughs> that uh, that they do that um, in the first two lines. They will say something that's very Christmassy. They'll say um, could be anything. Um, hang hang the star on the you know or picking out the tree or uh, uh, hanging the star on the tree or uh, getting your ornaments ready or that they'll just you know, Santa's sleigh, you know, they'll say things like that. And it's, that's how you get those placements. It feels like Christmas, sounds like Christmas. You're talking about Christmas. That's how you get the placements. So um, uh, Christmas, saying that and throwing those Christmas words out there, mistletoe, that's a great one. Um, getting, uh, saying those Christmas words earlier on, like as soon as the kind of the, the lyrics come in, is such a powerful way because I've heard so many songs that are about winter and they talk about, um, and I've done it before too. You talk about, you know, the snow's falling outside and it's getting cold. Um, you know, the, the best place is warm by the fire and, and um, you know, uh, and, and sipping, sipping hot chocolate, but you've just got through four different lines and you still, aren't, you're not really on the button. You're not saying it's Christmas. And then they might keep pa- painting the picture. And then at the end of the course, they say, I love it. It's Christmas time. And although that's fine and all, but are you going to have better opportunities? And I would definitely say yes. If you push all the Christmas stuff, Chris, push it a little bit earlier. Um, you don't have to say the Christmas word like Christmas, but you can say um, things that are really only relevant to Christmas. So that's a big key. That's a really, really cool one. So, uh, all right, I'm going to get, there was that five. I already did five. I'm going to give you a six one. So you guys get a bonus. So uh, create, cre- uh, be, cre- sorry, great, create, be creative with your instrumental public domain version. So I need to read my own writing here. Be creative with your instrumental public domain versions. Now, one thing that I like to do is uh, if if it's let's say it's I'm doing a Jingle Bells instrumental version, I'll be like I'll start it straight off using the same kind of keys that we just followed. I'll be like da 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 da, and I'll go through it. But I won't when we get to the next part, which is uh, dashing through the snow. I mightn't even do dashing through the snow. I might do my own little um, 
not a not a complex melody, but I'll just hang on and just vamp on a few different things. And you're creating this space inside of the instrumental. And then just go back to the jingle bells, jingle bells. So you go da 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 you do all that section, and then you just go to them da 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 but um but or something just something you create your own you you create your own version of it and then it's kind of like an a b a form which is perfect for uh instrumental instrumental cues then you go back into the jingle bells at the end just the main section and um give it a title and uh, there you go uh, that's a um that's a public domain uh mm. christmas Carol instrumental version so that's let me just mute that. So that's actually a really cool key of what, what I've done a lot. And those work really well. A lot of the time you'll find that the placement opportunities are, there's a lot of public domain that gets used during Christmas time. And um, I go through, as I said earlier, I go through, uh, uh, I think it's over 10 or 11 different movies and over 25 different placements. A lot, a lot of those are instrumental um uh, public domain so create your own and the cool thing about it you could create 10 different jingle jingle bells you could create 10 different silent night and one of the things i always tell tell my students and tell people is around christmas time that's the perfect time you know you're so you're so into christmas you're loving it you're hearing ideas on the radio or uh you know you're hearing your favorite artists do their own versions and and you'll grab ideas from here grab ideas for there and 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 create your own and then when january comes around it's like yeah if you're not into it which a lot of us are kind of over the uh over all the carols by january you know that's fine you just wrap up you wrap up your song and uh you're done and you can submit that you know during the year for the next year for the next season but as i said if you really want to get into it there's placement opportunities all year round so so awesome guys well hopefully uh you got your six points um uh and also uh one one last thing on those instrumental cues the instrumental um public domain cues is if you create uh, that extra little version that has a little less melody in it and a little it's less busy it's just a little bit um little the dynamics just pulled down a little bit you'll find that that actually gets used a, little, a lot more because they they want to start the scene with the sleigh bells or the jingle bells or the the public domain they want to start it off but then as the characters start talking and they're they're having the dialogue and the story of the movie or the show happens that's a perfect opportunity for them to drop down um there we go so that's a perfect opportunity for it to drop down in dynamics and let them talk and then as they wrap the scene up they will play the the um uh, the, the that B set or the A, a section again, which is the da 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 jingle bells da 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 da. So um, so that's that's another that's another way. Um, that's that's how you can get a lot of. That's a great strategy to kind of get those placements. So awesome guys. Well, hopefully, I know I uh, ran through those real quick, but um, those are I'm telling you, those are great keys for. Um, and these are the same things I use when I'm writing all my um, Christmas songs, and they're getting placed. They're they're getting placed. So uh, let's answer a few questions. Um, oh, thank you, Michelle. Um, Michelle's got a link in there for uh, what ASCAP do. Good. All right. Um, so, okay, let me look up here. Uh, Marla says, so why, why isn't it okay to keep it generic to winter and not say Christmas? You can, if you want, you can, you can actually, there's no rules. It's if you want to get the Christmas placements and I'm always talking in the majority. So if I'm like, I want to get more placements, there's more opportunities for those Christmas songs that say Christmas. And it's very clear it's Christmas versus a winter song. Is there placements for both? Yep. Absolutely. Is there more placements for Christmas, 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 Christmas ones? Yes. I would definitely say there's more opportunities for that. And I know that we're already always constantly looking for Christmas, Christmas, Christmas songs, like ones that talk about Christmas and have a winter in as well, but not just the um, winter ones. And and one uh, one extra thing I'll say on that too is the there's more opportunities for upbeat Christmas Christmas songs than slow ones. So if you've got like a winter solace kind of thing, it could be very beautiful and everything, but there's just a little less opportunities for it than a happy, happy go lucky, friendly, vibey 
you know, Christmas is exciting because when you think about a Christmas, you're thinking about it's exciting. You're not thinking about, oh, you know, this is this is a sad time of the year or um, and 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 may, maybe maybe it is like there's there's a possibility of um, that, you know, that that might be something that it, it could be a little bit sad or something. But majority of the time it's happy, you know. Um, as I'm saying that, you know, this Christmas is going to be a bit of a tough one for me and my wife because anybody's following last Christmas, we were, she had a big belly for, for, uh, I don't, I don't want to get into that, but we had a, uh, we had, we were, she was pregnant and we had a stillborn, we had a stillborn baby in early um, January. But so sometimes you do have, uh, sometimes you might have a quieter or a, um, more sad Christmas, but majority of the time it is happy. But um, anyway, so let's jump over here. Um, Rebecca says, when you say pitch, uh, who to exactly? The music supervisor or anyone else at the company such as Hallmark? Obviously, that's a really good question, Rebecca. Obviously, you want to pitch it to the music supervisor because the music supervisor is making the decision. But a lot of the time you with indie films, you can actually pitch to maybe the director or the, the smaller the project, the more hats that each person on that project is wearing. The bigger the project, the more that if you just send it to somebody who's uh, a writer or someone who's, um, you know, a part of the process, they mightn't have the time or they mightn't even know or they mightn't even have the connection of the person of the music supervisor to get into their hands so you definitely want to try and get it to the music supervisor uh one little key that i think a lot of us might realize is that when you talk to a music supervisor a lot of the time the music supervisor will say don't send it to me directly send it to send it to one of my trusted sources send it to these publishers these guys and they will vet the song and they will fill out all the metadata that we need and they will get the song to me in the format I need. And so I've heard that so many times from music supervisors. So that's a that's a that's a big one to know that um you know music supervisors are wanting to use trusted sources and they want you to go through that system. That's um that's something very, very common. Um Oh, thank you. Thank you for the love, guys. I appreciate that. I didn't I wasn't going to talk about that, but um, but yeah, Chris, Christmas can have those sad, sad ones, but as I said, majority is up tempo. Um okay, Scott says, I have a Christmas album of mostly public domain Christmas stuff. Awesome. Very original treatments. Could I work directly with you to place uh, them? Um, could we share? Okay, so that was a direct message. Um, yeah, uh Absolutely. Uh, send me a send me a message with that, and and that's definitely we'll definitely talk about that too through the uh, through the six month course. So the six week course, six weeks course, not six months. Um, is there a good to mention Santa Claus or right? Yep, absolutely. Yep, Santa Santa's on his sleigh. That's a good one. Um, Mister Claus is on his way. Um, <laughs> those rhymed. That must be a song, right? Um, all right, keep moving back here, going through some any more questions we have. Um, what are the most what is the most used genre for Christmas songs? Um, all of them. It's we need we need all. It's all of them. It's it's just amazing. I'd probably say the the only ones that don't get used as much would be um it's just more niche. It's just there's a smaller market is is the more alternate size sides of the the genre spectrum. So, if you're doing uh, like heavy metal, hardcore, screamo kind of thing on this side, there there's not going to be as many Christmas movies that that would feature that. They, they, yes, there would be placements for that, but it's a very small market. And then way on the other side, if um uh, if it's really electronic, um uh, one one thing that's hard to place is rap, but not as I said, it's just on this side as well. So. Uh, there is placements for that. Yes, they they do ce celebrate. They do need that genre, and so it's just smaller. And so the if you come more into the middle of pop, like pop would be pretty much the like they need tons and tons of that. And then um, I also think the majority. If you're going with the majority, um, uh, you know we're we're going with excitement and we're going with wholesome sounds because when I say wholesome, I mean like 
organic or feel good uh things that sound good and if you sound like uh, when i say sound good i mean like acoustic guitars pianos um things that are a little bit more adult contemporary or you know it's not too edgy because if you think about what is christmas a lot of the time christmas is about family you know it's about uh it's not about you doing your own thing. It's maybe about, you know, fitting in with the family thing. And maybe you'll have, uh, you know, you'll go to some other parties where you can kind of do your own thing. But most of the time it's, it's, you know, it's, it's more of a family thing. It's a family movies, it's a uh, family time. And so that's, so think of those kind of softer sounds or those sounds that are a bit more pleasing to everyone and not these, <laughs> you know edgy or you know it, but you can do those as i said it's just more niche so i a lot of the time i try to go for the bigger market because then it's easier to get placements because there's more opportunities and um so yeah um okay so uh any other questions here let me see hey steve oh yeah uh Hi. Hi, hey, how so are you? <laughs> hey, um, I missed number four and number six. <laughs> Could you? Okay, cool. That? All right, <laughs> I did. All right, I did go really fast. So I'm gonna just in case anyone else missed them as well. I'm gonna run through the titles again. Oh, okay. run through the points for everybody. So, um, okay. so number one is no big storylines, and then number two, it has to sound Christmas right from the beginning. And then number three is name your public domain songs correctly for 100% of the royalties. Number four is find out who is making Christmas movies and pitch directly to them. And then number five is say a Christmas word in the first few lines of the song. And that's for lyricists. And then number six, the bonus one was be creative with your instrumental public domain versions or instrumental cues. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. So yeah, a couple more questions here. Um, um, Great. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Um, question on the public domain vocal versions. If we wrote all new lyrics, can we claim 100% writer credit and shares? It, well, if you're doing um, public domain, uh, yes, you you can, if I understand the question correctly. If you're saying jingle bells, jingle bells, let's go to the beach today. <laughs> let's say that was your lyric. Uh, it's public domain, so it's free to use. And so, yes, uh, if I understand that question, then yeah, you would still name it steve's beach jingle bells or you know in that case so yeah absolutely and that's a great i great idea because you're giving them some some parts to that and then uh, of the jingle bells thing but then you're creating your own and it creates an original unique piece of work and um absolutely yep absolutely good question steve steve yeah go ahead yeah michelle yeah hi um I guess I'm try trying to clarify number three. Well, first is like if you have the um, song with the library and they haven't registered it yet, you said that I can just register it with my PRO under like Michelle's Jingle Bells or whatever, because it's Jingle Bells. I didn't change the lyrics, but it's the musical arrangement's a little different. So I would just register it with a PRO with uh, that name. Uh, no, you'd have to check with, if you've signed it to a publisher, if it's exclusive, then you need to check with what they want you to do, because that's, and a lot of the time they will do that. I think, I think someone brought that up in the chat before that, that um, I think Michelle brought it up earlier that, that, you know, should, you know, they already retitle, they retitle it with, if it's crucial music, they'll retitle it with uh, CRI or whatever, one, two, three, four, five. So they'll have a name. They already retitled it so that you get that 100%, but it's nice to keep your titles all the same. Otherwise you will get them lost. You'll get them, you'll be like, oh, who did I sign this to? And it's it's just better right from the beginning to put that original title at the beginning of that public domain. I, I would check with your publisher first if you before you register it. Yeah, it's your publisher. Anyway, um, but then how do you get the 100%? I didn't understand number three. How do you get the 100% royalties if it's public domain? I guess I just, that went by me. I don't 
quite understand that. Well, there's a rule that there's a rule that if you if you do a public domain song, um, then the PRO will only pay you ten percent of what's what's what you got. So let's say you got a one hundred dollars, you'll only get paid ten dollars for that public domain. So if you retitle it to uh, your original song, or or you make it yours and it make makes your and you retitle it cor- correctly, you will get one hundred percent of your of those royalties. So you'll get one hundred dollars, not ten dollars. Okay. Yeah. So does that does that make sense? And and your most most publishers will do that for you. If you don't have it signed to a publisher, then you need to make sure you do that yourself if you're pitching out. But most publishers will take care of that because they don't want to split. <laughs> want to split ten dollars or or ten uh, percent you know there's gonna be a replay of this great right? yeah absolutely yep mm-hmm. great thank you yeah good good one um go ahead uh, uh beverly go ahead i see your hand up oh hi, hi steve um i'm sorry i don't have my camera on but um is this is really good can i still pay and get into the next section next yep. session absolutely okay. not, not too late yes. okay Thank yeah, you. go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and sign up on the link. And... What's that? Uh, Sorry. All right, no, Sorry. that's all right. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and sign up, and they'll send you the link, and then you can you can log straight in. Absolutely. Thank you very much. No worries. Awesome. So let me tell you guys before we before we uh, I'll answer a few more questions in a second here, but let me tell you a little bit about because I know a lot of you guys might might want to write a song um and and work with me over the next six weeks and and even pitch it to um some of the publishers that i i'll I'll talk about in in the course but some of the things that we'll be getting it that you'll get out of the course or some things that will you know the things that will help you is um you know your songs will be dialed in for your pitches so that's a big key you know you'll know that um that you're you're dialed in you're giving this music supervisors exactly what they want uh, number two is you'll be able to show your collaborators uh, what to write and what not to write in a Christmas song. So you'll be the person in the room who's like, no, no, this is what works. This is what works. You can't do this. You can't do that. And so that would be, that's a, that's going to be a huge thing. You'll, you'll save countless hours on researching what works and what doesn't work. As I said, in the course, I have a, uh, it's, it's over an hour, hour video of, um, I walk you through over 20 different placements on on over 10 different movies. So I I show you and I show you what's working and I and it's it's so powerful. It's kind of like watching a movie with me. We don't watch the whole movie. It's just all those little bite sizes, but it's really cool because you oh, you're you're sitting in the room with me and where I'm just clicking on the the different placements and I'm saying this is why that worked. Look how they used this and going through so many back to back really solidifies. Uh, what's working and then it's like wow they did it again they did it again textbook they did it again they did it again and it's so really really cool to see uh, another thing you'll get uh, you'll get to work with me um uh, with all the different feedback sessions or listening sessions um to make sure that your song gets all the way to the finish line so you this six week course is going to be an amazing opportunity for you to do a song uh, collaborate with some of the people if you want or you can do it with your own connections but you'll finish the song maybe even two depending how fast you are but you'll be able to send it to me we have a listening sessions every single week for the next six weeks so you'll get to uh, we'll get to fine tune those songs and get them into those get them ready for for those placements and i'll show you where you can pitch them i'll be looking out for songs as well so uh, that's that's going to be a great thing and so just a few other things that we're going to cover in the in the six weeks just so you know is um uh, I interview Christmas Corey, as I said, he has over over hundreds of placements, uh, Christmas placements and cuts. Um, uh, and then we will write a we'll write a Christmas song together. That's one of the classes where we actually sit together and we're like, the, you actually write a song alongside of me in the um, in the lesson. You get to pitch directly to me and work through any edits that your song may need in the next six weeks. I'll show you all the strategies um, you need to know for original public domain and instrumental Christmas songs. We've shared a little bit here today, but it's just, there's just not enough time to, you know, I'm talking so fast. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can uh, hear some of what I'm saying, but there's, there's just not, ta- not enough time for, um, to share all the stuff that, that you need to know. Um, there will be, there'll be pre-recorded lessons and live classes. I'm a big believer in, in, um, I think it's good to have both. I think having those pre-recorded lessons is really, really cool 
because you can sit down on your own time and you can rewind and, and really dial in what it is. But then those live sessions are, are critical. You need to have that accountability. You need to have someone saying, how's your song coming along? Uh, what are you up to? What, have you written another verse? What are you doing now? And then you need someone to give you feedback on those little parts and um, and help you develop that song and to, all the way to the finish line. Uh, you get to meet other producers and collaborators in the group. Uh, and uh, we start next week. So the first class is next Thursday. And we're going to finish, we're going to wrap up the week of uh, Thanksgiving. So it's going to be such a really cool, um, uh, you know, Chris, Christmas hang hang with me. You know, it's going to be fun and motivating. And I've got a lot of really cool, fun things planned that are really Christmassy. And I uh, am just in time. If you if you finished your song the couple of weeks before Thanksgiving or the week of Thanksgiving, that's perfect enough time for me to ship it directly to the show that I'm working with. Um, if if it's accepted, of course, and it reaches that level, then you could be in, in for December. And last December, we placed uh, with the show that I'm working on, we placed, I'm, I'm going to give the stats and everything to the VIPs in, in a minute, but um, basically there was 80 Christmas songs we placed in the month of December last year. So one of those could easily be yours. So it's really, really cool. But, um, but anyway, so I just want to share what the, what the course is. And, um, and if you, let me, let me see if, I, um, let me see if I can. Steve, what about instrumentals? Absolutely. Yep. Use. Instrumental public domains. We talk about those. For we talk Christmas. About, yeah. Yep. yep. Yep, instrumental. Um, okay. Inst okay. We don't talk too much about inst. There's not too much of a need for inst original instrumental Christmas pieces. It's it's there is you can get a little bit, but what they're going to want to go for is is one of the public domain instrumentals. That those are going to be way more. I would probably say nine of those to one um, instrumental that sounds Christ Christmassy, but it's it's not a public domain. I would actually just throw little public domain lines in there, like in the middle of the song, dun, 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 or something, you know, so it sounded like uh, jingle bells. And so definitely I, I would, and I, and I would head that way a lot more than, than creating an original piece of an original instrumental cue um, that sounds Christmassy. Yeah. All right. So let me just uh, look at the chat here. Um, I also, also want to get you the link for, um, where is it here? Now I do see your hand there, uh, Rose. So let me, let me answer that one in just a second here. Okay. All right, there it is. So here's the link for, um, Oh, Cinder. <laughs> 10 points for Cinder. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, I can't help myself, Steve. <laughs> You're hey, awesome. And if we signed up for the VIP, but then we decide to do the course, we get that VIP money off the price of the course, correct? Exactly. Exactly. Good point, uh, Cinder. So, Absolutely. So it's $50 for, or it's $49 for the VIP. Um, we're going to be going out, heading over there in about 13 minutes. So I get to hang out with all you guys again. Um, if you want to join, sign up for that, uh, absolutely. You'll get your, um, if you do do the course, you'll get that $50 off. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for that. And, and go ahead, Rose. Uh, Sorry. Um, I want to thank you again, Steve, um, for the tips and the encouragement and hope to join your course. <laughs> One of your absolutely. courses. Thank you. And a great Christmas for you and your wife. Um, well, I wanted, you. mine is, I don't know if I'm missing something. Okay. When you register, I have this public domain song, different arrangement, different lyrics tweaked up. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, and say it's Jingle Bells. I'm registering with my PRO. So you're saying if I named it Bells Jingled and filled in all the boxes with my PRO, it would be 100% royalties. I'm kind of looking at Mary Haller's stuff here. So I guess I just want to make sure that I'm doing it correctly. Yep. And, you know, that's that's kind of my question. That That is correct. That is correct. And I would actually, instead of, I'd, I'd go a little bit deeper and, and and give it, put your name on it. So say Rose's bells that jingle, like, you know, may, maybe a little bit more um, um, or, you know, jingle bells by by Rose or, you know, something, something, um, instead so of just make sure it's got you know make sure it's a it's a definitely a bit more of an original kind of title and okay. um 
That's yes. But in that case, yes, you go ahead and register it as that new title. Don't register it as Jingle Bells because when they, if if you're pitching it and it gets placed somewhere and that means you are, you're keeping your own publishing and you are the 100% owner, uh, then when it does land somewhere and it sticks somewhere, the royalties will come through the system, of course, and uh, the back end royalties through your PRO. So that will go into your, um, uh, that will they'll hit your account and then you'll get 100 of those and not 10 percent of them yeah now if you're if you're sending it to a publisher which a lot of us a lot of us do and i highly recommend that because they already kind of they kind of do that anyway they do that for you like um imaginary friends music partners which i'm 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 working with they do i uh ifmp dash the song but we still tie we we still retitle that song to be steve's jingle bells or or whatever it is you know we don't just call it jingle bells but that's how you collect the 100 percent of your royalties yeah. interesting i appreciate your time and effort and your knowledge thanks oh no worries no worries it works it absolutely works i we got a handful of um placements last year um with, with my collaborators and a few originals of my own and it's so cool getting on some of the hallmark movies or um uh, even some of the tv shows that i'm working with they just especially the hallmark they just keep playing them every christmas so it's great <laughs> um all right cool uh, let me have a look at a couple more questions here um where did the vip link go let me share the vip link again so here's the vip link i think that There's the VIP link if anybody wants to head over there. Um, if you're interested, uh, my Christmas album can be previewed here. Okay, cool. Uh, Michelle said, um, last question is that only gets 100% if you rewrite the public domain. Yeah, because if you if you rewrite it, it's becoming, it's the same kind of idea. It's, it's still going to be yours. So if you're rewriting it and creating your own lyrics, well, that's that's the same kind of thing. But just to clarify, that's not the case if you just use Jingle Bells, your own musical arrangement, but it's the same lyrics, then you don't get the 100%? Okay, C correct. So the, the I think I know I think I know what you're asking. And, and basically, if you just kind of jump in the, the business side of, of a PRO, they have some rules that say that if you do a public domain song, if it's titled Jingle Bells, then we can only give you 10% of what's going to come in because it's a public domain. So if you retitle whatever song it is, if it's Jingle Bells and then you you do your own version of it or whether you just say Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells and then it's the rest of the song is 100% original. If you title it a different title, then they will go when they're about to pay for that song and, and send money through, they're not going to take or, or take 90% off the top. They're just going to, they're going to give you the whole 100%. So. Okay, I just want to make sure it's legitimate. Even if you're your own musical arrangement, but you're still keeping the lyrics, you can still do that. That was, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. either way, either way. And so they're not going to go okay. through the lyrics of every song and, and be like, okay, you know, <laughs> you said the word jingle five times, so let's take out one <laughs> or two. They, they, they're looking at the main title. That's the, that's the rules that they have. And so, and of course, every PRO might be slightly different, but most of the part uh, PROs, that's what they, that's what they do. So yeah. So, um, cool. All right. So, uh, let me keep going here. Um, um, okay. So, uh, Dixie, you should have got it in your email. So, um, I'll message that to you if, if you can't find it or you can't get it. Awesome. Yeah. No worries. You've got to run, you got to run, but hopefully guys, um, uh, hopefully this has been really helpful to you is, is there any last minute questions or is there any, um, uh, is there anything, anything that you was a gem or a little uh, gold nugget um, that you, that you want to share or in the chat or is anything that really helped or you're like, man, that was worth my time. <laughs> All of it. Shaggy, you're awesome. So uh, actually I do have a, uh, I do have a, a prize. I forgot to mention. Um, I do have a cash prize. Um, so <laughs> this I shouldn't have forgot this one. So okay, so cash prize is is for a hundred dollar uh, cash prize 
for if you, but you have to do something for me. You have to help me. You have to go on your social media. You have to post something that you learned today. What was one of the gold nuggets or one of the things that you learned and post it on your social media um, uh, and tag me there and then uh, do a screenshot of that and send it to my email address, address which is Steve Cullum, Steve at Steve Cullum. I'll put it in the chat here. Send it to my email address and um, and title it or do the subject heading um, uh, uh, post uh, or post for cash prize. Do post for cash prize. Um, and I will be um, kept post for cash prize and I will be selecting someone for a hundred dollar um, uh, cash prize. So that, that's going to be really, really fun. Um, so again, what you got to do is just post some, a gold nugget that you learned from this little um, workshop and just tag me and then do a little screenshot of that and email it to me and I'll be selecting somebody and I'll, and I'll, and I'll contact you. So <laughs> I love, I love doing that. It's always fun. I forgot to do that at the beginning. Uh, go ahead, Nancy. Yes. I see your hand up there. You, good question. Hey Steve. Good to see you. You too. Um, hey, Dan. Great. So listen, I just have a question for you about um, alternative mix alternative mixes um because i've heard different and i've had this question for you before actually and you have answered it but i've heard a few people say oh my god those sleigh bells if i hear another christmas song with sleigh bells you know they're like sick of it so my question is should we be sending alternative mixes like this is you know jingle bells without sleigh bells this is jingle bell with tons of sleigh bells would that be helpful or would it just be too convoluted? Um, it, I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't do it because and I know what you're saying, because I, I always hear that from a couple of music supervisors. Like, if I hear another jingle bells, I, if I hear another slave, bells, I'm going to just, this is the end. But, um, uh, but the fact is they still need it. <laughs> so it's, it's more of a personal complaint when, when you hear, when I hear it, cause it's like, you still need it. You still need that sleigh bells for that movie. Yeah. Are you sick of it? Yeah. Sometimes I, at the end of Christmas or near December, I'm like, I can't stand here in the Christmas. I will say that to my friends, you know, I'll be like, I'll be like, if I hear another, uh, you know, I would, you know, one of the, one of the popular songs or something, but so we all do that. But the fact is they still need it. Like you're just, you know, I wouldn't say that, but you know, to my music supervisor friends, I'd say, Oh, you're just complaining. And we all do that. But um, but no, I personally wouldn't worry about a jingle bells without the without the sleigh sleigh bells. If if they reach out to you and um and ask you, do you have another version of it? Oh, ab absolutely. I'll yep, no worries, and I'll send it to you. But I've never had that. And uh, sometimes though, sleigh bells can be a bit too loud. Um, that's the only other thing. And sometimes your mixes, you might need to rest your ears a little bit because sometimes that that the higher pitch stuff, especially glockenspiels and and uh, xylophones that high pitch gets our, our ears kind of get numb to it as we're mixing a song and we hear it so many times and it can be so loud and ear piercing for the with fresh ears and so they often need to go down a lot lower than normal so okay hey, thank you thanks so much yeah no worries great question all right awesome guys well um if you don't have you should when you signed up for the for all my vip uh friends if when you when you registered it should have sent you an email right there and then with the actual zoom link but if you didn't if you don't get it message me i'm going to be looking out for that and it's all going to be on replays anyway so um but message me i'll be looking i'll keep my messenger open and i'll send you that exact link if something didn't happen didn't come through but um uh awesome okay uh last question um steve can we also send you christmas songs without attending your course uh, yeah, you can send it to me. Um, send send the send me a Christmas. I I don't know when I could get to it. I'll um I'll try and get to them. I I have a lot of submissions that I'm going through, and um, but absolutely, uh, I can I can definitely send. I'm always open to hear hear music. It's just sometimes I can't get back to you straight away. Or, um, but yeah, awesome guys. Well, always great hanging in with you. I'll um uh, I'll see you over in the VIPs and uh or my VIP guests, and I will see you guys um in the chat. That's it.